Audrey, are you there? Elvin, can you hear me? Oh, Audrey. Thank the vaguely defined higher power I am not sure I believe in. When your camera cut out, I thought the, the, the blowhole blew up and do you with it? No, when I realized the blowhole was filled with explosives, I dropped my laptop and jumped out the nearest window. If you dropped your laptop, what are you calling me on? My laptop. You went back for it? Into the building covered in C4? Do you know how many cute pictures of me are backed up in this laptop, Elvin? It's fine, nothing exploded. Are you coming to my place? No, I'm in like a highly fragile state right now and I don't think I should be exposed to the people who live in your neighborhood. Do you mean poor people? Exactly, thank you so much for understanding. I'm in like an abandoned t-shirt store next to the blowhole, I'll just stay here. Okay, then can you tell me what you saw in that video? What was your father doing in the blowhole the night that Gabby killed your mother? Oh, Elvin, it's so much worse than we thought. <sighs> Come on. Come on. Gabby, to what do I owe the pleasure? Eddie, something's happened to Griffin. Can you be more specific? A lot of things happened to Griffin. He's a very odd young man. He's been taken. Taken? abducted. Somebody broke into his apartment and knocked him out. Wow. Did you call the police? No, not yet. I... You called me first? I'm flattered, but a little confused. Uh, do you think there's something I can do that they can't? Well... Or do you think I had something to do with it? Did you? We're supposed to meet in your bar shortly, aren't we? Stay put. We can talk it over when I arrive. Didn't you say you were flying here? That's right. Shouldn't you be on the plane by now? Consider me already on my way. Hello, Daddy. Audrey, where have you been? I need you at home. I've been doing some investigating, Daddy. And I helped. Elvin helped a lot. <laughs> Thanks, Audrey. Uh, hi, Gabby. I'm Elvin, Audrey's cousin. We haven't met yet, but I've seen all of you. I mean, I've, I've heard a lot about you. Uh, hi? Investigating what? I know the truth, Daddy. The truth about how Mom died. I saw the security footage from that night. You broke into my computer? Yes, but that's not the security footage I'm talking about. I got the real video all by myself. No. Yep. You didn't. Oh, sh oh she did. You went to the blowhole? You? I mean, Elvin, I believe. They've always been a self-starter. Thank you. But you, Audrey? You did something requiring planning and decisive action? Are you sure? I mean, you're my daughter and I love you, but come on. You've always underestimated me, Daddy. So, Uncle Edwin, you used the computer Audrey found at the blowhole? What are you talking about? There's no power in that building. What computer? What footage? Somebody, tell me what's going on. You didn't kill my mother, Gabby. I'm pretty sure I did. I was there. You didn't, and you didn't put your wife into a coma either. Daddy did. Uncle Edwin was already at the club when you got there, Gabby. He was in the main control room the whole time. He turned the sex machine Angela and Brandy were strapped into up to a dangerous speed and caused their accident. Eddie? Is that true? I'm a rascal. But, but why? Eddie, why would you do that? I'd like to know that too, Daddy. I thought you loved Mom. I did, Audrey. I loved your mother very, very much. I had no idea she was even there. That night was a present for Gabby and Brandy. It was supposed to be them in the machine. So you didn't mean to kill Mom? No, I swear, it was an accident. See, it's not as bad as you feared. I guess. It is for me. Eddie, I thought we were friends. Eh. I mean, sure, all those sex and drug orgies the four of us had were fun for a while. Ew. But I was getting bored with you, and Angela wasn't. Plus, the blowhole was the most successful sex club in Distant Falls, and I wanted to buy it. A double fatality there would bring down the asking price and get you out of our lives. Kill two birds with one sex machine. Ha! <laughs> that was good. I can't believe it. All these years you let me think I was a murderer? That I put my own wife in a coma? Well, sure, if you knew I did it, you might have told somebody. 
I paid a lot of money to cover all that up. I wasn't about to let you ruin it. Eddie, you're, you're a monster. Hey, that's crossing a line, Gabby. Let's not make this personal. You've gotten away with this for too long, Uncle Edwin. Audrey has proof that you're responsible for the accident. Audrey? It's true, Daddy. I've copied the video onto a thumb drive. All I have to do is find a computer that can use those. I guess like in a museum or something. It's just a USB, Audrey. They're pretty common. If you say so, Grandma. Audrey, I'm your father. You don't really want me to go to jail, do you? I mean, I guess not. Audrey. All I wanted from the start was for Daddy to tell me the truth, Elvin. Now he has. My life is hard enough. I'm not going to make it worse by sending my father to prison for an accident. An accident he blamed on someone else. So I have had an accident and blamed it on someone else so many times. Exactly. Don't be so high and mighty, Elvin. Who among us isn't responsible for a couple of deaths here and there? First, literally none of us except for you. Second, a couple? Whose death besides on Angela's are you responsible for? A couple doesn't always mean two, Elvin. It just means a few, and one is a few. Oh my god, Daddy. I made that exact same point to the bartender at DT Tremors after he accused me of peeing in the ice bin a couple of times. Good for you for standing your ground, Princess. Aw, thank you, Daddy. Does it matter? With or without that video, I'm going public, Eddie. And if I go to jail, it'll be worth it to take you down with me. Finally, I'll be free of all this guilt. Oh, you're the biggest problem in my life, Edwin Sunderman. And I finally found the solution. I wouldn't say I'm the biggest problem in your life, Gabby. I think my plane is a little bigger. Your plane? Yes. It's about to crash into your bar. What? Gabby, get out. Oh. oh no, what if she escapes through the door? How could I have overlooked that? Oh right, I didn't because I'm not stupid. It's blocked from the outside. Uh, uh, break a window. This is a bar in Distant Falls. There are bars in the windows and those bars have little windows in them. And those windows have bars too. That's a weird design choice, but I like it. G -g Get out the back. Don't bother, all the exits are sealed. Why, Eddie? You just threatened to expose me a few seconds ago, Gabby. I don't think my motivations are unclear here. At least tell me if my brother is all right. Don't worry, you and Griffin will be reunited very soon. Checking in as requested, Mr. Sunderman. Just took off and I'm on my way to the waterfront now. Gunner? Oh, hey, a kid. You're flying the plane that's about to crash into Gabby's bar? Also, you know how to fly a plane? I know how to take off and how to use a parachute. Don't need much else. Everything went smoothly, I assume, Gunner? Smooth as a hot knife through an artery, Mr. Sunderman. I got the dumbbell and the dead girl in the back. Dumbbell? You mean Griffin? Ouch. That connection came very quickly to you. My brother's on that plane. That was what I meant when I said you'd be reunited. It's called ominous foreshadowing. I learned it in evil business school. Gunner, did you say dead girl? You remember my last assistant, Rebecca? The one who got her head chopped off by your helicopter? Oh, that's right. Gunner, you got the head too? It's in her lap, Mr. Sunderman. Rebecca, the one who looked like me? Audrey, I don't, I don't think that's important right now. Yes, it is, Alvin. Daddy, did you hack my social media accounts today? I did, or Griffin did on my behalf. You had me posting all morning that I'd be on that plane. Correct. The plane you're about to crash. That's right. With the body of a girl who could almost be my double. The hamster wheel is spinning. Daddy, you're faking my death. Nope, I'm faking your... Oh, you got it. Sorry, sweetheart. I was sure you were going to come to some other humorously incorrect conclusion, but no, you are really surpassing all my expectations today. Good for you. Oh, thank you, Daddy. Wait, no, I'm angry. You know how upset I got the last time I faked my death? All my friends made fun of the outfit I was buried in. I know, sweetheart, but it can't be helped. I'm faking both our deaths. Rebecca will stand in for your corpse and Griffin for mine. Oh, Uncle Edwin, no offense, but Griffin standing in for you is kind of a stretch. True, the healthy yet oddly unattractive bodies of older wealthy people are 
difficult to find in nature, but Griffin was pliable enough to be molded into shape with the help of forged dental records and some rapid weight gain. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Sunderman, but the plane's flying itself now. So I'm going to bail out before I crash to my death, if it's all the same. Better wait until the last minute, Gunner. Someone jumping out of the plane doesn't fit the narrative I've concocted, but if you time it right, the crash should distract witnesses from your parachute. Got it. Hey, Gunner, could we talk for a minute? Sure, kid. I got a couple of minutes before I got a perfectly time, a low-altitude parachute jump from a crashing plane. What's on your mind? Uh, could we chat in a, a private room, maybe? Who's the host? You need to set it up for us. Oh, that's me. Hold on here. All right. Here you go. Gunner, why are you doing this? You asked me to. No, 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 no. Not why are you talking to me? Why are you following Uncle Edwin's orders? It's my job, kid. I do the work that's too dirty for the rich folks what pays me to sell their delicate hands on. But you're about to murder an innocent woman and an even more innocent man who I may have a slight crush on. Is any of us truly innocent? Oh. That's an interesting question. In this context... Except you. Me? You're the most innocent person I ever met. Born to a lying backstabber like Vivian Salt, growing up with nothing. You should be looking out for number one like everybody else in this crummy world, but all you want to do is help people. I'm far from perfect, Gunner. Sometimes in the summer, I'll stand in front of a store's open doors to feel the air conditioning, even though I know it's hastening the onset of climate change. You're as close to perfect as people get. I was off my rocker to think I could have had any part in bringing someone like you into the world. Not being my father doesn't mean you're not capable of being a good person, Gunner. I'm good and I'm not my father. Huh. I never thought about it like that. You can still live that better life you dreamed of, Gunner. All you have to do is choose it. Say that like it's easy. It's not. It's very hard. But you don't have to do it alone. So I said to her, if you didn't want to be slapped across the face, maybe you shouldn't have gotten a job at the DMV. That's hilarious, sweetheart. Oh, are you done? I'm done, all right. Done with you, Mr. Sunderman. Not this again. I'm a changed man. I ain't murdering nobody on somebody else's orders no more. Only my own. Right, kid? Sort of. It's a good start. You mean I'm not going to die? Griffin's going to be all right? Me and your brother and the girl and her head are on our way back to the airport. That ain't right. What's wrong, Gunner? I can't change course. I'm still headed straight for the bar. That's because you're not flying the plane. I am. Where? I'm not in the plane, imbecile. I've got the controls locked to my computer. You proved I couldn't trust you when I found the security equipment you left behind at the blowhole. Plus, you can't have a plane crash without a pilot. What sense would that make? Bail out, Gunner! Take Griffin with you! I think you'll find the door to the cockpit is sealed tight. Daddy, you're being bad right now and not in a fun way. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'll explain everything when this is over. But for now, I'm going to sit back and enjoy doing what billionaires do best. Celebrating while unimportant people die. Who wants caviar? Caviar.